Washington State coach Jake Dickert is with us coming off a of bye week, which is probably you know well deserved and much needed by uh, by Washington State at this point. Jake, what's the experience been like so far since taking over the team? It's been a whirlwind to say the least, you know, and it's you know a little bit unique, you know, to lose one coach is something, to lose half of the staff is is something that's a little bit different. And I just give a lot of credit to our players. You know, I, I think in adverse times, you get to choose what direction you're going to go. And it bonded them even closer. And, and they're working hard. They're staying together. And most importantly, they're believing. And there's real power in that. They believe in themselves. They believe in each other. They believe in the new staff that essentially we created in short order. And we're moving forward. And, uh, you know, I think our two performances in that short amount of time show you know, kind of their belief, their heart, their togetherness, and the culture that's been in our team. So it's been an exciting time. It is a good time to take a little bit of a break and get healthy. And, uh, you know, obviously we got a lot in, out in front of us. It starts uh, Saturday with Oregon. Yeah, those performances include a, a narrow two-point loss to BYU at home and then a pretty dominating win at Arizona State. I don't think you can say the Cougars have been distracted. You, your guys came out of that pretty quick. Well, I think it's the, the product of really good leadership. You know, I think our, our eight captains really made the decision to set the tempo for everything that we want to do going forward. Okay. And when you have a player driven operation, you know, it can be something that's really unique and really special. So, you know, football coaches and players are creatures of habit. So let's stay with those routines and stay with what's working for us. And, you know, it's been good so far. At some point, your boss, the AD Pat Chun, tapped you on the shoulder and asked you to take over. What sort of experience is there to get you ready for this? There's no playbook for this, is there? There is no playbook. Um, but my dad taught me a long time ago. He was a big time educator. And one of his famous things that he always said just in his speeches that he'd always give was always be ready for your opportunity because you never know when it's going to knock in life. You know, so every day I've been preparing for this moment and I've known this is always where I want it to be. You know, it's not the ideal situation, an ideal plan. Right. Right. But if you're focused on a goal and it's been a dream and I've been working for it for so long, you feel ready for the opportunity. Now, there are some things where you're like, oh, I didn't know about that or this or, or whatever it is going forward. And it's been a lot, you know, still game planning the defense, still calling the defense. Um, our communication, I believe, as a staff on game day has been great. So it's a little bit of learning on the fly, but also I, I feel prepared for this moment because it's been something I've been working for my whole life. Yeah, that dovetails into my next question, because you are a candidate for the job. We know that no matter what happens, you couldn't have gotten a better extended first interview. Yeah. Now, we're watching it in real time. Do you see it that way? Absolutely. I, you know, they have acting head coach in front of my name. I like to say I'm the interviewing head coach, you know, and, <laughs> and every day I'm getting interviewed. But that's, you know, we like to talk with our players all the time about you're being evaluated in everything you do. OK, from practice to meetings to academics to off the field. Well, now it's time for coach right, to practice what I preach. You know, I'm being evaluated every day on how I can handle the staff and the program and getting our players ready and prepared. So, you know, like I said, interviewing head coach and that's the way I take it. And, and I'm the head coach here at Washington State until told otherwise. And I'm excited about this opportunity. And it's a great fit for me. That's great. OK, you come from a great D3 conference. You were at Wisconsin Stevens Point. A yeah. uh, great legacy at Washington State with the Bennett's coaching basketball there from from Stevens Point. But my question is, how does a receiver from <laughs> Stevens Point become a defensive coach? <laughs> I know it. I know. And I get this question a decent amount is because when I I always wanted to be a coach, that's in our family blood. And uh, my dad told me, hey, one regret I had is to not do it in college. I want you to try it. You know, so I, I was at a math education. I, I had a, a job all lined up and I went to my uh, a college coach and, and said, Hey, can I stay on as a GA? But at the time, you know, my brother was an offensive lineman there. So he didn't want me coaching on the same side of the ball. And he's like, Hey, it'll do you wonders when you go back to offense, go learn defense and defensive principles, and then we'll move you back someday. Well, I got my big break the next year with Craig Bowl at North Dakota state as a defensive graduate assistant that formed and shaped really my whole life and, and kind of how I see defense now. Um, and I, you know, when I started, I was like, I'm always going to get back to offense. I'm always going to get back. Then I just started down this train and now I can't even imagine it the other way, you know? So it was that moment, my brother on the other side of the ball, 
but I've always felt and saw the game from a broad perspective. You know, I was a quarterback in high school. I started as a quarterback in college. So I always loved the game and seeing it from both ways, even watching it now as a head coach, I get to watch the offense special teams a little bit more. I just, I love it. So if not for your brother, you'd be a, you'd be calling plays for somebody on offense. Probably. I would, I, you know, it'd be, life would be a lot easier. I'll tell you that those offensive guys, all the rules are shaped that way. So life would be a little less stressful. All right. Speaking of that defense, I looked it up. You guys are, you lead the Pac-12 in takeaways with 20. Mm -hmm. You're tied for fifth overall and uh, tied for second nationally in fumbles or fumbles recovered with 12, I think. What kind of, you know, emphasis do you put on that? Is that part of your MO? Yeah, I think from day one, we talk about how, how you can affect the ball as a defender, you know, and like we talked about today's game is shaped a little bit more offensively, but how can we steal possessions? How can we get the ball back to them? And it starts with our motto, right? We call it code Cougs, but it's play hard, play fast and play together. And our guys just play hard, right? You can say whatever they want out wise, they are playing hard and they're giving it to each other, uh, their effort and their energy every play. So it's one thing to get them out. It's another thing to have the effort and the passion to want to run to the ball to receive those things. And we do some things, um, you know, in the spring and in the fall of, creating takeaway boards and giving them points for strip attempts and all this stuff. But they take it from the practice field to the field. And that's, what's the biggest thing we show it in the unit meetings. Hey, this is why this happened. I saw that. I saw you do the same thing in practice. So it becomes a thing and a mentality where man guys expect it out of each other. They demand it out of each other and they're just playing fast and flying around. And it's just awesome to see get great players playing really hard, that's how you get takeaways. I don't think there's any magic sauce to it. I got to tell you, if if it, your defense is anything like the energy projected by Ron Stone, then you're going to be okay. We had him on here a couple of weeks ago. That guy, that guy's got more energy, more than a football field's worth. He's unbelievable. He's one of those deals. If you could like bottle up right what he has and you could sell it, you know, it's better than any energy drink. He's one of our vocal leaders and much needed for our for our defense. I'm really close to Craig Bull, the Wyoming, Wyoming coach. I know you kind of started there at NDSU and then with, with him at Wyoming. Has he reached out during this whole thing? I don't know how close you guys are, but he, he's a really good guy. Yeah, we've had a little bit of communication. And I, you know, the biggest thing at Coach Bull, I wouldn't be here sitting in front of talking to you today without him. You know, not just giving me the opportunity at North Dakota State. When I left there as a GA, he, he said, you know, Jake, I want to hire you again someday. I want you to go out and make the mistakes for somebody else first. And he followed up on that promise eight years later and, and brought me to the University of Wyoming and, uh, you know, gave me the opportunity to be a group of five coordinator, which is is tremendous, obviously being there on staff. Um, so I owe a lot to Coach Bull and, and we'll have a time, you know, when we get a chance to see each other again to really sit and talk about all this stuff. I know Coach is very detailed and disciplined and worried about his stuff right now, but I wouldn't be here without that man. And he's shaped me um, more than probably anybody in this profession. All right. A couple of the last questions. Number one, does Jake Dickert have an agent? Cause you may need one. <laughs> I do have one. I do have one. I've had one right. the last couple of years. So yes. We'll be right, that's very good. Yeah. Coordinators do. That's yep. very good. And then what about this big game against Oregon coming up? Uh, you guys are right there at the top of the North. You got a chance to, to at least have the tiebreaker mm -hmm. who would have, you know, imagine, I guess a couple of weeks ago, we'd be talking about football and Washington straight at the top of the North. You know, I think it's just a, a it really shows about our guys and what they kept believing. Okay. We didn't start the season the way we wanted to, to your point. And we always knew we were capable of more and we can do more. Right. And I think the biggest thing is we got the quarterback position settled in. Right. There were some injuries early, you know, and we've been a lot healthier going down the stretch and just taking it one game at a time, you know, but it's, you know, important that we have put ourselves in this position to really play really meaningful games in November. And as a program where we're at and what we're trying to build and do, you know, that's exciting. And I just give a lot of credit to these seniors, right? When they showed up now, six years ago, this program wasn't even close to being in this position, you know, so they've done a good job weathering a lot of storms, a lot of adversity, and have put themselves in a great position come Saturday night. But it is one out of one out of time, you know. So these games will keep building in importance as we go. But we're just focused on this moment, this practice, this meeting this afternoon to get better. And that'll lead to positive results Saturday night. Jake Dickert has been inspirational. Good luck to you and good, good luck to the Cougs this week. Uh, we really appreciate the time and spreading the word about Washington State and go Cougs.